Hi, I'm Dr. Berry, and I want to talk to you for just a moment about pterygia. That's P-T-R-Y, pterygium, like a pterodactyl, the flying dinosaur the, the, the got its name because the wings were the fingers. Well, a pterygium comes from the same Latin word, and it means wing shape. And on some people, especially those who work outside in the sunlight, in the dust drying wind conditions of the southwest United States, things like that, they will have a little fleshy growth out here on the cornea. And the cornea is the window that you see through. If this little fleshy growth covers the pupil, you can have very bad vision and a perfectly normal eye behind this little growth. It's not a cancer. But this is unregulated growth of the conjunctiva, the skin over the white of the eye, replacing the skin over the cornea, pushing it out of the way. The, the pterygium just grows, and it almost always comes horizontally or nasally or both in the exposed portion of the eye between the eyelids. It's rare to have one come from above or up from below, but it's common to have them from the side. That's the portion of your eye that's had the wear and tear, the micro trauma of wind, dust, drying, and particularly sunlight with ultraviolet light. We think that the ultraviolet light has somehow damaged the contact inhibition of the conjunctiva, and it doesn't know when to stop growing, contact inhibition. My skin stops growing at the edge of my lip because it touches a different type of tissue, and it is genetically programmed to stop. It is inhibited from growing further by the contact, hence the name contact inhibition. And the lip skin stops and doesn't grow where the mucous membrane is inside your mouth. The same thing happens in your eye. The conjunctiva grows to here, the corneal epithelium grows to here, and they stop when they contact each other. If you damage that genetic structure with continued years of outside work, sunlight, things like that, then the conjunctiva loses contact inhibition and it grows over the cornea. You can remove it. It's a surgery to remove it. The big problem with the surgery? Recurrence. They tend to come back because we, in many cases, have not changed what the person's doing. They're still outside. Agricultural workers in the southwest United States, Arizona, places with lots of sun exposure, may have a pterygium removed and then two or three years later it comes back, they remove it again repeatedly. If you're still doing the same stimulus, you may get the same response. Pterygia can be removed and they should be removed before they get so far out that when you take them off, you have a significant residual scar. You do lose a little clarity of the cornea when you remove a pterygium because you've got a little, little fine scarring at least. And if you have a recurring pterygium, so it's a second or third operation, you get more scarring, it's harder to do. There are several ways to approach the surgery. My favorite is to do a conjunctival autograft, which means go up under your lid, get some fresh conjunctiva that hasn't been exposed for years to sunlight. Take off the pterygium back onto the white of the eye and put a new layer of virgin conjunctiva here that hasn't been abused by ultraviolet light. The success rate is much better. If you just remove a, a pterygium and leave bare sclera and let it regrow naturally, it'll recur about 50% of the time. If you do a conjunctival autograft, it recurs maybe 10% of the time. So <clears throat> there are other things that we can do for people who have recurring pterygiums over a, multiple episodes, um, but they're a little more advanced than this. A primary conjunctival transfer of tissue, a graft, is a good first step for most to reach it.